In which war did you serve? Second World War. What was your branch of service? Navy, United States Navy. And what was your highest rank? Petty Officer First Class. And in what general location did you serve? Well, I started in Newport, Rhode Island, Norfolk, Virginia, Gibraltar, North Africa, Sicily, Salerno, Italy, Anzio, Italy, where I waded through blood on the shore. Even Anzio was terrible. How many men we lost? I think we lost 30,000 men there. Anyway, I waited through blood there. But all right, in Anzio, and uh, it'll, it'll be the court status, and then uh, Normandy, and uh, but to f England, from England to Normandy. And in Normandy, I went ashore, I brought troops ashore 19 times, and uh, and I never stepped off the beach in France. I've been to France 19 times, and I've never been off the sand. Never been on the terra firma. <laughs> okay, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Do you recall the date? Yeah. Uh, August 19th, 1942. Uh, why did you choose to join? I don't know. Patriotic, I suppose. I don't know. Just wanted to be a sailor. <laughs> why did you pick the service branch that you did? Because I love to see. Okay. How did your first day of service feel? And can you tell us about it? Yeah, we got up at 5 o'clock, ran a mile around the drill field, went back to the barracks, showered, changed, went to breakfast, and then started, they started indoctrination uh, of us. Uh, Telling us this and all the stuff about the Navy. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about your boot camp experience? Yeah, we get up at five o'clock. I ran, you know, around the. We all ran, had to run around the drill field, which was, we had to run a mile around the horse. Uh, we had to. Come back, shower, eat breakfast, and then we had to lay out all of our sea bag full of gear, and it all had to. Be, and the uh, uh, chief petty officer showed us how to how to fold and tie it off so it would all, all fit in the sea bag. Because each sea bag stood about this high, I guess. Yeah. Do you remember any of your instructors specifically? Yeah, uh, my chief's name was Di Giacomo. He was a chief bosun mate. Any specific experiences with them you'd want to share? Not really, I don't think so. Yeah, okay, that's fine. He used to drill us and give us all the nomenclature of different things in the Navy and all that stuff. After boot camp, where did you go and what was your first assignment?
after boot camp went, I was sent to Navy Pier, Chicago for training on diesel engines. I they decided I was uh, how would you say it? I was uh, oh I don't know. I had the inclination for diesel for engines. I was mechanically inclined, mechanically inclined. So they sent me to Navy Pier in Chicago for a diesel school. And I came out of there as uh, with the rank of fireman uh, three months later. And where did I go from there? Oh, then to Little Creek, Virginia, which was an uh, amphibious base from Little Creek, Virginia, I went to, they were, sent me to Norfolk, Virginia, where I, oh, I picked up a ship in Little Creek, Virginia, the LCIL-13, Landing Craft Infantry, ship number 13. It was uh, in flotilla number two, and she was a 150-foot landing craft. And the men that built her in Philadelphia Navy Yard <coughs> told, had told us that we were lucky because we would never go to sea in those ships because they weren't seaworthy. And we crossed the Atlantic in it in midwinter in 1943. It took 21 days. It took three days to get from Norfolk to Bermuda and it took 21 days to get from Bermuda to Gibraltar and thence into the Mediterranean to uh, North Africa. And then, of course, in North Africa, we were fighting the German army under the G German General Earl Rommel. North Africa. We worked all the way through North Africa, making them runs and beaching troops. And from there, <coughs> we went to Sicily. And uh, after the we were able to occupy and uh, push the Germans out of Sicily. We made, we made, now our next uh, invasion was Salerno, Italy. And after Salerno, Anzio, Italy. And Anzio was a real bloodbath. I don't know how, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of troops we lost in Anzio. I remember one time it was so bad, my job was to go ashore and and bring a lifeline ashore so that the troops could haul themselves ashore without tipping over and their packs ended up on the surface and their legs like turtles and unable to get up, they'd be drowning. You know? So I would save them. In the meantime, they kicked holes in my shins, terrible. I was bleeding from both, both shins. They kept the hell out of me. Yeah, they were dying from the water. They were drowning. And I pick their heads up and, and get them on to, to where their feet touched, one after the other. And then, what's... Oh, yeah. It got... The fighting... The German shooting got so heavy that the ship pulled out and left me on the beach all alone. I mean, I wasn't alone. I was with all the troops, but, but I was <laughs> I was supposed to be back on my ship, you know. But so I was standing there in the ship, and I, I mean, on the sands, and in Anzio, with a pair of shorts on, sneakers, a chambray shirt, no helmet. I had given my helmet to one of the troops that lost his on his way in. So I gave him my blue Navy helmet. So he must have been a good target. But anyway, and then uh, the ship 
pulled out and left me there. And I jumped in the water and started swimming. I figured I'd, because we had, oh, hundreds of ships out there. So I figured I'd get alongside some ship and they'd pick me up. And finally a ship did pick me up and it was my ship. And the next day the skipper told me, the captain said, called me up to the bridge and he told me when he seen me swimming out back out to sea that he had to, he turned it decided to turn around the ship and pick me up <laughs> rather than let me yeah yeah so that was a nice one where did you go from there from that was uh, angio oh from then from angio we went to england and from england we invaded Normandy, France. And I went ashore in France 19 times, and I have never been off the beach in France. I've never been to dry it on actually dry land. I was always on the beach. 19 times we made trips to France, each time discharging the 185 army troops plus their officers. Yeah. <coughs> Where did you go from France? France to Boston. What did you do in Boston? They sent me home for 30 days leave. I had been gone two years at that time. So after leave, they sent me to San Francisco Yeah, San Francisco, and in San Francisco, they, I was put on a troop transport for <coughs> the Philippines. <coughs> and I went to the Philippines. I didn't see any fighting in the Philippines, but uh, I ended up in repairing small craft for the landing in Japan. And so from the Philippines, I went to Okinawa, Japan, and I landed there, and I didn't have to fight there. I was, well, all I thought was this Navy, so all I had to do was keep the, keep the boats running. And Okinawa, yeah, and from Okinawa, there he is sent me to China. And I spent two years in China. What did you do in China? I was in charge of a, <coughs> what they call a yard oiler. It's a small tanker <coughs> that would <coughs> take fuel from big tankers and bring it alongside and pump it onto Navy ships that were in the the Wangpu River. And I did that for two years in China. Then, <coughs> from there I went to China. Oh, back to the United States. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was assigned to uh, San Diego, naval base in San Diego. On San Diego, in San Diego, I was assigned to uh, LSMR 404, which is <coughs> landing ship medium number 404. Our main batteries on the landing ship were 10 dual mount rocket launchers. And my my assignment there was, I was the first class petty officer in charge of the main engine room. So I was in charge of all the machinery. What did I do after that? 
Yeah, I spent a couple of years doing that. And then, oh, then I was assigned to the Arctic. And I spent one year in the Arctic, <clears throat> off the coast of Greenland, on an icebreaker. A small icebreaker ship. Well, a small, I mean, she was 100, 150 feet, 160 feet long. The Red Bud was her name, R-E-D-B-U-D. It was a former Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Buoy Kinder. And I spent a year on, spent a year on the, on that. And I think I got out after. I had eight years in, in 19, it was 1950 by then, I think we got out. I had intended to stay in for 20 years for my retirement, but I was married at the time and my wife kept on my back and so I gave it up, came home. If you don't mind discussing it, were there casualties in your unit? Oh yes, oh yeah, we lost. Out of the 24 ships, we lost eight, eight ships or so. And there was casualties on all the ships, except ours. Number 13, we never had any casualties. Yeah. All the other ships had casualties or were sunk. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Were you awarded any medals or citations? Yeah, I got a whole bunch of them here. I was going to show you. We could do that after. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me which ones and how did you get them? Oh, I don't know. If I'll, if I'll show them to you, I, I never paid much attention to that. Got all kinds of medals. Okay. Did you ever sustain any injuries? No. No. How did you stay in touch with your family? They had, they had mail, what did you call it? This little... I forgot they called a little folder of mail you, that you could write a note practically on it, that's all. And they would send it back home to your address, but there was never any, any indication of where it came from. So n nobody would ever, the enemy would never be able, if they recovered it before it got there, they would never be able to tell where you were or where you were going, you know, or where you've been to. What was the food like? Good. Maybe food's good to me. Still here. 93. <laughs> <laughs> How did you entertain yourself in your spare time? I didn't like playing cards, so. Reading. And mostly reading. Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? <coughs> Bob, how about the ponies? Yeah. Bob, Iceland. Talk, tell them about the ponies. In Iceland? In Greenland. In Greenland. The chief that uh, sent, you got stuck in the ice and uh, they sent for supplies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One, one time when I was on the icebreaker, we were off the coast of Greenland, about 1,000 miles north of the southern tip of Greenland, and we got caught in the ice, and we couldn't go forward, and we couldn't get back out of the ice, because the ice froze around us. So we were in the ice oh, for days, and all of a sudden, one day, we saw a pack train coming across the ice, made up of ponies pulling sleds and it was led by a man who I talked to and he said he was an Eskimo chief and I asked him why 
why they there were women driving the carts, the little uh, the sleds. So I, I asked them, I said, how come the you got women on the uh, driving the sleds instead of men? He says, oh, he says, he says, men don't want to take a chance on falling in the uh, in the water. And if you fell in the water, you die. You know, was, actually, the, actually, the water was seawater was below to freezing. Yeah, it's like twenty eight degrees. Did you keep a journal? Pardon? Did you keep a journal? I did, but I lost it years ago. Where were you when your service ended? Sandy, probably San Diego. What was your homecoming like? Well, by the time I got back, the war had been over a couple of years. And uh, no one paid any attention at all. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was, the war had been over for two years and that was all passe. Did you work? or go back to school? No, I had graduated from high school before I left. When I was 18, I graduated from New Britain High School, senior high school. Did you make any close friends in the service? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you continue, continue any of those relationships? Yeah, I, by mail for a number of years, yeah. What did you go on to do as a career after the service? I became a policeman. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I was too lazy to work for a living. <laughs> I became a policeman after six years in uniform. I became, I got an assignment to the detective division in another few years, I made reg uh, through civil service examinations. I made regular detective, <clears throat> and I retired as sergeant of New Britain Police Department after 31 years. How did your military experience influence your thinking about war? Got to have a lot of luck. And I had it. <laughs> That's about it. Did you join any veteran organizations? Yeah, I belonged to the VFW, Veterans of Foreign War. And I, what else? I belonged to one other one, too. American Legion? Yeah, American Legion. Yeah. Do I don't, but I, I don't think I go once a year to any of the one of them. Yeah, do you attend any reunions? Pardon? Do you attend any reunions? I did. Uh, they had reunions for a number of years for the LCI to, uh, would have reunions. And I went, I attended those, but now, of course, I don't know, I may be the only one left alive. I'm 93. I don't know of any of them that are left. How did your service and experiences affect your life? <laughs> Gave me a lot of fortitude. Yeah. About it. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to add that has not been covered in the interview? Oh, I could think of them, but I, I don't know. I don't remember anything right now. How many landings did you make? Oh, all together. All together in my, during the war, I made seventy one landings from the ship. 
One of them was at Little Creek, Virginia. One was in Harzu in North Africa. And all the rest were on enemy beachheads. Six, 69. 69 of them were on. I went ashore on enemy beaches 69 times. I'm impervious. I am impervious to bullets. I shall not die by the sword. Did you enjoy your time in the service? Yeah, absolutely. I loved it. Is there anything else you would like to add that has not been covered in this interview? Yeah, when the, I was crossing the Pacific, the war ended. On a day that the sh I was on a Dutch, a Dutch merchantman for transportation, and when the war ended, we pulled into Ulithi, which is in the Caroline Islands near the equator, and we pulled in there, and uh, one of the Dutch crewmen gave me a bottle of beer to celebrate it with. Wow, yeah. How much? And yeah, because then I went to Japan, yeah, to uh, Okinawa, Japan from there. No, I went to the Philippines from there. Yeah. What was your favorite place to see while you were in service? Naples, Italy, the most beautiful place in the world. The Bay of Naples is the most beautiful place. I've been all around the world, and that was the most beautiful place in the world. At that time, of course, the water was clear. It didn't, it's probably, maybe it's polluted now, I don't know. But the water was clear. The people were nice. Uh, but, and uh, I went to... I saw Vesuvius. We were in the while we were in the Bay of Naples. Mount Vesuvius erupted on us, on the ship, and it spewed pumice all over the ship. Right over, right after we had spent the day painting the ship. So our ship was cut from the top of the mast to the waterline was non-skid paint. <laughs> But uh, I uh, went to uh, Pompeii. You must be aware of the last days of Pompeii. I went to uh, visit Pompeii with a shipmate and I, and we got lost in Pompeii, and the night fell, and we couldn't find our way out <laughs> for, for a while. It took us a while to find our way out of Pompeii. So I got lost in Pompeii. How about the time you had to fix the underneath the boat, fix the, under the ship? When you got so cold you couldn't. Oh, yeah, one time in the Arctic, on, when I was on the icebreaker, they put they put the small boat over the side <laughs> into an open, open patch of water next to us. And uh, so the small boat. The starter got flooded with seawater, so uh, when I had a, re they sent me down to replace the starter on the on the small boat. We were sitting in the ice, and oh my gosh, I was able to change the starter, and they sent me down because I was most knowledgeable, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, by the time I finished changing the starter, my hands were so cold they had a they had a cargo net over the side of the ship so I could climb down to the boat. And my hands were frozen, 
and I couldn't climb back up on the ship. So they threw a line down, and another guy came off the ship, tied it around my waist, and they hauled me back. <laughs> And I got on the ship, and oh, I was crying because you know how your hands and they, oh, they were frozen. I couldn't move them, I couldn't move them, and there's such horrible pain, you know. <laughs> and oh my gosh, took a while to thaw out. If I ever did, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that was some. All right, Mr. Walsh, I would like to thank you for your service, yeah. and also thank you for taking the time to be interviewed today. Yeah, you're welcome.